So that's the white sound. Yes. Plus you find got, got an empty joint. Huh? And our dog. Lester. Driving down 13th Saturday. And uh, we'll see. Hey, it's on there. Really honest. On the road quite a bit this year. Anyway. I'm using prior to COVID, I was on the road about 85%. Yeah. Everything's online. Yeah. Now it's not as much, but lately I've been just to cover it. The point is now such a I think so. So, but it'll it'll pick up September yeah. cold, but you know. Um, so you had a full port. There's your song. Oh, good. Hey, man. What are they? All right. Nice. Hi, Robert. Gentlemen, gentlemen, how are we doing today? Hey, I made it. Yeah, how are you? Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. I had the weekend. Oh, man. <laughs> I overdid it. <laughs> I, I played too much golf. Um, I played five days and that fifth day was like, oh, gosh. That heat on Saturday didn't help any. Humidity just sucked me dry. Early this time, I played it. That's true. Well, it was all <laughs> uh, I'm in the men's league out there. They ripped it all. I mean, there's still stuff out there that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, right. Do I tell her? That's a big group. It's all the one that I usually have 50 some guys. Or really not that many plays. Only two. Yeah. 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 Get in the lighting. I just saw him walk on. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> doing a month of security right now. My yeah, maker was done in a day and a half. You don't have to play any of that. Everybody pays $2 to go to the treasure. And then after that, all the better. Thanks for joining us. If you want to, you put, you know, just put it all pictures of Mac in this. No. No, but that's usually everybody gets in something. Oh, wow. Doing all right? You can close it before you stick it up. Big stack? Yeah, yeah. I just added it. Oh, yeah. I played all right. Oh, stuff. I played all right. You played lights out. Don't lights out. Yeah. Come on. No, I didn't. It didn't win anything. Didn't win anything. Look at that. Thirty-four days, brother. Count down. I got a couple of them. Sure. Okay. Yes. All good. With us via the satellite here. Uh, let me comment. We have nobody here today. That's a true event of uh, April the 18th. Sent them out. Did everyone have a chance to? I have. Should have been an email. That's Friday. I didn't. I'll double check. No, I got a couple messages from it, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm in busy. Uh, okay, but uh, if there's only one, if there's only one person taking the he also doesn't have. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve the eight boys. There we go. Got a second, Robert. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Is approved. Continuation of prior. We got we got announcements on there. I've got just a couple of quick kind of updates. Um, the main one is carts are getting delivered on Monday. So this coming Monday, they've got it all set up. They're going to deliver all the carts at Mac. The week after that, we're getting Tex and Sam. Um, all the electric carts, they're looking at probably September. Um, so that's uh, the biggest thing that's happened since I've been here. Gonna have all the cards. So we got everything in place. We got the plan to get them. They're gonna deliver them in the parking lot. They come unassembled. Basically, we have to put the tops and the windshields and all that on. So we got a team that's ready to help, um, and they're bringing their team to play. So 
Um, there's they're gonna take away all of the broken down carts and um we're gonna kind of shift some cars around for the next week and then because we have a big event at Tex, and then the following week to bring the rest, we can get rid of all the carts that we can keep and we'll be in the first time since I've been here in good shape on carts. By the first of September, all three of those courses will have. That's great. Yeah, they I got an email on Sunday. Um from Mr. Uh, Massick saying that they were, he didn't want to tell me until it was confirmed, but he finally felt safe enough to send that email. So that was a good Sunday present. Um, the next thing, just a quick update on junior golf. We just finished the summer programming and just kind of give you an idea of where, where we're at for the year. Between our internal uh, programming, our part of the university and junior, we saw junior golf foundation, we've had about 1300 kids. Uh, through our programs this year, and some of those are kids that did multiple programs, but 1,300 spots so far. We've got a big line of the fall programming uh, coming up, so I think that's uh, always we're going to get better. But we're proud. That's a lot of kids to come through, uh, come through our program. So I'm um, always looking to to expand that, but uh, I think our junior program is very very strong. And then the um, golf marathon where the kids play for free. Um, that's Really grown over the last few months, a lot more taking advantage of that. So, junior programming, I think, is is going in the right direction, and we're really strong right now with what we're doing. So, very happy about that. And then the final uh, kind of announcement I have is the most of you probably know that uh, Ron Mosier, the superintendent at Auburn, is retired. Um, kind of came as a surprise. We, we didn't have a big notice, but. Uh, we did the job posting. We just it just closed last week. We have six strong strong applicants. Um, tomorrow I'm going to try to get that scheduled. And you getting our interview meeting first, and I was going to ask if you would be on that interview panel. Um, but we're going to start interviewing. Hopefully, and get them all scheduled Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, and we can get someone in that position. Uh, but I was I was a little worried that we would not get very many applicants, but we got six that are very qualified that we're going to get. Um, be excited that we ended up doing what we did. It sounds like that process will be pretty quick. Getting somebody in the position or you funny. Uh, <laughs> our part of it will be, you know, we, we'll get the interviews done and then there's background checks and all that stuff, and then they have to start on a pay period. So it all just depends on the timing of how everything falls. But um, it's been important to that point already. Are they still doing that uh, city panel from the Various entities through the city departments that don't know a thing about what you're actually interviewing. No, I'll, I'll put the panel together. I've already got it. Uh, Seems um, like they kind of got away from yeah. Yeah. people. To, Everyone on the panel is familiar with golf. Um, it's it most almost every everyone is internal for golf. They understand what we're looking for. You've got to be any impact that condition of the course. So we. Why it was the assistant super at um, Sim? He moved. We switched down, put him at Auburn because he's been there. He spent ten years plus there, so he's prepared with the irrigation. Um, and you know, obviously, we we got some hot weather coming in next week, but we're hopefully we've got to the end of the hot weather. Um, so I, he's doing a good job right now. We're just trying to get through until um, until we get this person in place. So I don't I don't expect any any issues. All right. Anybody else have anything for our business or anything? I go. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, one thing I wanted to talk about because we made a recommendation to the city council that we approve funding for the irrigation system. And I know the first month I think the ball got dropped and never got you know, the message never got wherever it was supposed to go. And then I think Nate said that he was going to move that forward and, and push it forward. Well, three weeks after that, I called up two of our city council members and said, hey, you guys have heard about the recommendation that we've made. And they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. So there has to be a way. We're supposed to be a direct line to the city council. That's my understanding. That's what Mr. Houtman has told us. There has to be a way that our word gets to them somehow, and I don't know what that is. I don't know if we need to get with the city clerk, because I know whenever I watch a city council meeting, 
the mayor always says, Madam Clerk, and then she brings up the next thing on the agenda. But there has to be a way that we can get our message through uh, because it does us absolutely no good if we're going to sit here and make a motion and recommend something to the city council and then they don't even care about it. I mean, they can't support something they don't hear. So I would like to try to iron that out some kind of way. Yeah, and my apologies. I thought I had it set up or whatever. Basically, we need to have Troy talk to the city manager and that gets it to council. I will go talk with him like right after this. So my apologies, something there. And then I think that connects some with. Well, I thought that was the whole portion stuff. Having this board was it didn't have to go through the park board and the city manager and all these other lines. That's how we get on the city council. But that's how we get on the city council. So there's a couple different ways that we can get on the agenda. And if that, and I thought that's kind of what the referring have a presentation of the recommendation to council. And I thought I had that set up, and I guess it didn't get through. If we want to have a different sort of connection just directly to council, we can maybe do things like have a representative from this board speak like at council meetings or be prepared to do that and make kind of that presentation. I was kind of curious too, seeing the petition and note and everything as well related to the budget and how that might relate to making that presentation to council. But if we're going to make recommendations to get on the official agenda, that does kind of need to go through the manager's office. They work with the clerk a lot to set the agenda, but that's, I mean, that's kind of how we set the agenda for council. And then there's an agenda workshop and things like that. Yeah, it seems like that's just the opposite of why they set this up. According to Mr. Houghton, they set it up so it was a direct communication with the council so that it didn't have to go through all those other lines because that was always part of the problem is somebody might tell the park board or whatever, but then they would never tell the manager or somebody would tell the manager. Or they would never tell. I mean, I, I don't know. It seems like no, I, I totally understand. And yeah, I will I can work on that part, especially right afterward. And I thought I had that other recommendation. Is there anything that we yeah. need to send something to the city clerk? To have her put it on the agenda. The clerk, I think that's probably going to be. The clerk needs to confirm with city manager's office what goes on the agenda. Like that's why I'm suggesting sort of things that go on the agenda do generally need to be confirmed by the city manager's office. So if we want something on city council agenda, then that's kind of the process we have to do to get it on there. There are other means for us to try to talk to council. And if we want to set those up, such as making reports at council meetings or individuals from the board, even speaking for the board at council meetings, things like that, we can do that too and maybe like designate people to do that or do something kind of like that to speak more directly. And also something we'll kind of see in a little bit, a big part of this board too was being able to work on fees without going to council. So we're trying to set up that direct line, but we still have that sort of fee authority, which we're going to kind of work on a little bit a second that the board does as well. But I, again, yeah, I thought I had that set up. I will go work on it right afterward and we need to come up with a couple options at the next meeting as well to have pathways to speak that aren't just agenda based. If that works, I think it would be good because cool. it doesn't do us any good to sit here and come to meetings and make recommendations if they're not heard. The, uh, the same thing. I know Darius does do minutes for the meeting. Can those minutes be sent directly to council members? Council generally does look at meeting minutes. That's part of the consent calendar. So if we can send stuff like that. We need to set up the pathway to have regular recommendations from this board go to the manager and council. And that's what I've been trying uh, to work on, yeah. like Park Board. Yeah. Maybe somewhat of a simple way to get information to them if you get the minutes. I, I believe your minute, like I said, I believe your minutes already are before council, maybe even at the next meeting. It just depends which ones have been approved. Yeah, they look at generally there's kind of a big section of meeting minutes <laughs> every once in a while that boards send to the council and they review them that way for sure. They don't want to read the minutes or anything we can do about it anyway. So and that's why I think maybe kind of setting up a way. Potentially, and I'll check on this option to make sure it's official with the board and everything. But more like if we have someone go speak at council, that's generally the most effective way to directly make a point, even if it's on behalf of. Maybe that's what we do next time. We make an official recommendation. 
we have someone go speak at the city council meeting to make sure that our message gets across. That note, I did go as prior business, but I did go to the council CIP meeting on July the 25th. We have a copy of basically what I said there. Okay. It was received. I thought it was fine. If it got anything done or not, I don't know. Mayor asked several questions and, uh, and we had some communication uh, after the presentation. Marcia went with me. We also took the uh, signatures down from the petitions. I actually can't the city manager, Mr. Layton, and I believe he passed it on because they did get dispersed to the proper channels and, and I guess people did see the, the petitions that we did do. I also attended uh, the mayor's and they had an open meeting and, and it turned out there was a multitude of people there for the meeting I went to for the mayor and for the board of education. It was a two hour thing and by the time the smoke cleared and all was done, they only answered two questions and it wasn't anything that I put up there. So uh, the uh, primaries were over with, we're down to two people and if we can get out there to whomever is coming. There's two people running in the fourth district, which is mine, which when they have an open meeting, I'll get to it. And we will see if we can actually at that time pose a question like, what is your particular stance on privatization golf courses and or uh, trying to place some of our CI needs into the CIP and get some answers on this prior to elections. Uh, I don't know how many districts is actually up, but I do know the mayor is up, and there's probably going to be a pretty good track there from judging. When I read in the paper where Wu, Wu, what's her name? Wu, Wu. She is, uh, now they were referencing her in terms of her supporters, and her supporters supposedly are, are for privatization of golf. So I would assume. We'd want to go to a meeting and see if we could get her on a record of what she actually thinks about. Uh, and what I, do you mean when you say privatization? Privatization. The people that are putting up money for her have come out publicly saying that we should privatize the golf courses. Not there, so they wouldn't be public golf courses? Then? Right. That's exactly what we just bought. We got a land management. Oh, just the man drop. Yeah. Oh, okay. man. I see. Good book. Just, just what we went through and oh. fought and finally got a what five to two vote off the council that we retained operation from the city, but it's come out publicly that her supporters are for privatization. So that I think we'd want to get to some meetings and make sure where her stance is. That's just my personal opinion. So uh, again, if we just get down to two candidates. You can get more questions in versus what I went to when I had the seven candidates there. There just was no time, and I figured that out after spending a couple hours there. So, but that's fine. I mean, it, it didn't really. Uh, I do believe that we probably need to keep them after this particular item here because we still want to make sure that we do get what we're looking at. I mean, I realize it's a sole issue for us, but that's what we're here for. Comments other than me rattling on, I'd be happy to listen. How many people signed the petition? I didn't hear you. How many people signed the petition? Oh, uh, it was between three and four hundred. We could. It was. It was positive. You know. I mean, potentially, we're looking at 190 to 200,000 rounds this year. You know, it will knock on wood thing, but, you know, that is some. Up, but that's still a lot of people that can be in there voting for somebody. And so I'm just, like I said, if you can get them actually in the public record and saying, yeah, we're for this, or we're against this, we know where the people can lean, and if somebody plays golf and somebody's anti golf, you know. It's a point that you might bring up. So, anyway, 
on the new business. Uh, now, oh, I did say the mayor, the mayor did express interest. The uh, CIP is that he asked some questions about Sim Park again. I haven't seen it, you haven't seen the actual CIP for 2024, so but I'm not always sure we could ever really look at 2024 versus 2025 anyway, because we got such a late start on it. I mean, it's uh, but we do need to stay after it. You don't, you don't get anywhere. Okay, uh, new business, Sim Park Irrigation. Yeah, so I've asked Darren Norman, superintendent at Sim, to come, and, and basically all I wanted to do is, is let him go over all the issues that, that happened this year through the winter, through the spring and summer with the irrigation. So, Darren, if you could come up. Uh, there's a map. I don't, I don't know. How, but kind of, he took a picture of the irrigation map so he can kind of explain what he's, what he's going to talk about there, right there. I don't know how well this is going to show up. If you take take this and just hold it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Darren Dorman with Sim Park Golf Course. Um, kind of hard to see from where you're at, but like the little circles are in with irrigation heads. Okay. And if you'll notice, you can kind of tell how the layout of the course is. And that's kind of backwards to me, so I got to read. <laughs> OK, so up there is the clubhouse. OK, so we got one, two. OK, and if you see, need a, a stick on her. Okay. Uh, so this right here is the main line. See this runs? It's in a loop, runs all the way around through the course. Got isolation valves. You got valves because I got two, basically two systems on this course. I've got a block system which runs the T's and the fairways. And what a block system is, one valve, right where he's got his arrow. Yes, one valve controls just like on that one right there. Will control four heads, so four heads will come on at one time. Okay, so that's on our T's and fairways. On our greens is valve and head. So there's a valve at each head. So when I turn on that station, one head comes on on the green. Okay, does everybody, I know Mike understands this, but everybody understands. Okay. So here, here's my, what I have, the main problem I have. The, the block system part. Uh, these valves, they, they get worn out by debris and stuff like that. There's a diaphragm in that. Valves, and they're all brass valves. Of course, it doesn't matter if they're brass or plastic as far as how they work. But they'll quit closing or quit opening one way or the other. So I have to go in and manually open that valve up to, nine, I've got it down to 19 zones right now. I'm beginning, oh, roughly anywhere from four to six, um, give or take, you know, but generally. And in doing so, I can only run five zones at a time. So, and on top of that, I'm trying to do other things, changing up spray, well, whatever. So, like on fairway two, I've got I've got two zones. I've got the one up by number. That zone right there does not work. So I have to manually open that. Manually open that. Three T. I have to manually open that one. Both of them weren't working. I got the one to work. But I have not, that one just, it won't work. You can't get it to work without replacing the valve. I've replaced the diaphragm. I've worked it up and down. Tried everything that I've known. I've talked to Grant Wilson. He was the former superintendent. Gave me some more pointers and I tried that. It didn't work. On these last ones that I have, I just, they need to be replaced. That's hard to do in the summer because Right here, you see these, them are isolation valves. Okay. I have no idea how many of them work, but a lot of them don't work. So in order to replace that valve, I have to shut the whole system down. 
I don't know if anybody was out at the course this past week, but I had a main line break on number one. Right there. Luckily, that isolation valve, that isolation valve, and these three isolation valves here isolated the whole area. So I did not have to shut the whole system down. To fix that, the issue was there was a T here and another isolation valve that is not on this map that I had no idea. Then I found another map that when they put in that new irrigation that runs along Burdock. Okay, well, the team wore out, but, but that's what that was. What's not on here, but, and of course, everybody knows the pump issues I had. And um, we had a little scare a couple weeks ago because the pump system started doing the same thing when I get to work in the morning, the system was down. And uh, it's just absolutely horrifying. So what come to find out was I was having zones sticking on, not shutting off while this programs are running. So there's more heads running at one time. So that's telling the computer at the pump house, you've got a leak. It got below 85 PSI and it shuts down to safety. So that was the problem. I was having no idea why they were sticking on other than the system is old and something new always is working or not working. And so Luckily, that's what the problem was. The pumps seem to be working great when I. What I have to do is I have to go to new ones. I had to add because I had gotten it down to 13 zones. Now it's back up to 19. It was 23. When we started the system when we started the season. So it was down to 13. Got it, now it's back up because there were six zones that were sticking on. Well, that's enough with greens and fairways running to shut the system down because it was saying that there's a leak because we got too many heads running at one time. So, and then, you know, and I try and do this, luckily we've had some timely rains, um, but you know, during that, that 10 days of corn trees, some of these areas are starting to show um, because not every morning can I, and I don't do this every morning because I've got other things that I have to do too. Um, but I try and do it at least three times a week. And sometimes that's not good. It rained last week, so I haven't had to do it yet this week. I don't know what more you want. I mean, I priced out some. If we want to roughly, I did a count of all the valves. Now I could have missed one or two because it's kind of hard to. But I think I've got 158 valves. Site one, you give it to me for $272 a valve. So that would be roughly 60 grand. That's just for the valves. That's not for because like you got you might have a good valve here and a bad valve there when you're there and it's a manifold system, which means one pipe's coming out of the main line and then it manifolds into the two valves to go to these two zones. So you might as well replace them. Some of this area is deep. That hole on one was, I stand on the pipe and it was up to here. No, I mean, that's deep. Now we're sandy, but I, I don't, I mean, we've got a back hole. I don't want to dig that. You got to dig a big hole on sandy. So, so I, I guess the reason I asked Aaron to come in is we don't get CIP money. I mean, we can, we can kind of actually the rest of this season probably but we're going to need to look at some type of fit i mean you can imagine walking into that and every week a different thing is happening you're trying to figure out around the world it's not the course is never going to be where it should be firing this constantly and he's spending all of his time that and not only what he really wants to spend the time on so i really just wanted him to come in if we don't get the cip money and i'm done Honestly, don't see it out like you just said. I think that's more of the following year. So we're going to have to have some kind of a plan for next year. Uh, probably winter would be very common. But we don't want to dump a ton of money into it if we're going to replace the whole thing. But I just wanted him to come in and, and describe what he's dealing with every day. So you guys were, you know, we talk about we got irrigation problems. What does that mean? How much you guys think that's the If you replace the valves, diaphragms, whatever you need to get those valves working. 
does that take care of most of the problem or is there still other issues where the irrigation system would need to be replaced? Well, that would take care of my daily problem. Majority of our winter kill bill this year was talking to the mic. I'm sorry, Marjorie can hear you. Yes. <laughs> that would fix part of the problem. I mean, Mike, when was it put in an 86? Yeah, 86. 86. So I have only, since I've been there, been there a year, we've had three, four mainline breaks. And they were just, other than this last one, they weren't even on a T or nothing. They were either at a joint. It's that time when your main line is starting to break, you know you're getting to the end. So this would be a Band-Aid on it, but it wouldn't be catastrophic. It, if I have to fix one of these valves and I can't isolate, I have to shut the whole system. And I am super, super shorthanded. So the majority of the time I'm by myself in that hole. Taking what what we fixed it with was mechanical joints. I've never, they're metal and they're bolted. It's very, very time consuming. And it's more of a precise. So it's very, it takes a lot more time, but you're not in the hole next year again replacing that but yeah it it would it would get us through if we were to replace the system but with the rest of the system being that old it doesn't buy you enough time he's put in with pvc pipe not, if you're not familiar with pvc pipe pvc pipes and hands and cracks now, he's been in there since 1986, because I put it in there. Uh, and during all those years, I'm getting each man's contract, each man's contract, each man's contract. We also got some valve units up and in that was actually metal. The metal rots out over time. I don't care how good the epoxy was or whatever they put on them. Eventually, it fails. Now, Obviously, we're 40 years into this thing and a 25 year estimate on before you start having major problems from expansion contraction, which is where he's at. And so, he, and when we were discussing it with the mayor at the CIP, we put in $2 million because we think that that's probably what it's because he needs to go to valve and head. When he's discussing this block system, and every time he has to put one of those valves, it probably costs us a thousand dollars. By the time you figure out his time and the if you put one in, you don't just have a valve, you got other mechanical joints that have to go in there. And these things are running 100, 150 bucks. Plus, now you got your downtime. And every time you dig a hole, there's a bundle of arms in there, and the guy Fiddling around with the shovel, doesn't pay attention to what you're doing. Now you got another one after they close the hole up. It's not working because he nicked a wire. Uh, it's a ongoing mess constantly. And like you said, this is a block system. And I think some of you guys have played earlier this spring when he was doing some work trying to put sprigs in over there. He's running a block and he's running four or five heads to try to hit one little spot. And then they start, somebody comes up, well, Jesus, don't they know what they're doing? Look at this swamp. Well, he can't control that, uh, which is why when you go back and you do this work, you put $2 million in the whole course becomes a valve and head, but you've got total control over everything that you do. So it runs the price up, but it also, sooner or later, I'm afraid the state's going to come by and say, well, you've got... 82 acre feet, you're going to have to go to 60 or whatever your your number is. I mean, it's it may be inevitable, it may not be in my lifetime or something, but it's coming. It's the same premise that the city uses. Buying city water, they don't sell enough to up the price. If they uh, need money, they if you know they sell too much of it, they up the price because they don't want you using it. So. It's a point that we're all going to get caught up in. So, you know, one of the other main issues with this too is the fact the job market. It's a labor is an issue. So I don't. I'm a laborer majority of the time, but I'm spending my time doing this when I need to be. Charged. 
I mean, I can change cups and do this at the same time, like spraying, you know, mowing, because I'm a, I've got a short crew, and I'm short on the short crew on, almost on a daily basis. I have somebody calling sick almost daily, but we're already short. We've got four people, you know, and out of them four, only two of us know how to do everything. So that's the other issue when you have, you know, and that's not what you guys can do. That's across the board. I don't know how we can fix that problem either. But. I played there Saturday and from this spring till now, you've done a wonderful job. Huh. Thank you. It's in much better shape. Other we, some days we can't keep up with mowing. Some weeks we just can't. I mean, we had three breakdowns last week on top of the irrigation leak. But Shardale, like he's saying, in his defense, they're just. It's just like Darren said, you can be changing cups and he opens up a valve and then something he gets maybe sidetracked and takes another 15 minutes before he gets back to it. Well, he opened the valve, he wanted to run for 10. Now the thing ran for 25. Guess what happened? It's standing water. So, and that happens more than no, it's just unfortunately, you're right. Because I get a phone call, this and get distracted. Anyway, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. I, I know I had mentioned it in the last meeting in Auburn about getting some help on the staff. Um, obviously, new irrigation systems at all four courses is obviously going to have to happen at some point in the near future. But however, it needs to be done to get into the work and make these make these jobs somehow more appealing to to get some staff because I mean we can best case scenario four or five years from now we've got the irrigation irrigation all four of them in but we're still gonna be short staffed and in the same on the other that don't have you know, right we, system so we I mean it's two things we also just ran up again schedule was going back to school so some of our part time help on the year because we're still just as busy the weather should have just saw it the next two months will be a challenge but um we you know have going through trying to go through the process of bumping up pay that is there's again 15 people that are involved in this process in 20 steps um we, we did a jump across board this year i'm going to try to do another one come the winter um you know, we try to entice people with the free golf and whatever. You know, we've put a new campaign out over the last couple of weeks to try to bring people in. Um, on the, we just got new beverage carts I didn't mention um, at X and at uh, Mac, and that campaign we've got beverage cart drivers. We actually had quite a few um, apply, so that it, it's effective on that. End. This is um, for some reason food and beverage is not as hard. The pro shop and maintenance is. I mean, we can't. We can have a job posted, and we won't get one applicant for weeks. And I, I don't know. It's not. I mean, it's not just us. It's a huge problem all over the entire industry, along with every industry. But yeah, any ideas? I would definitely love to hear them because I, I don't. I don't know where to go really. And go from eleven dollars an hour to twenty bucks an hour. So I, I don't know. It's, it's tough. Well, that's yeah. After. But yet, especially long term, I mean, even even new irrigation systems at all four courses, if we're going to have three or four maintenance staff at it, 18 whole golf courses, just and there's only so much there's only so much you guys can do. Unfortunately, history wise. In the golf business, there's only. Three or four people that probably make it. Really a decent living wage working at a golf club. Your head pro, your head superintendent, maybe your assistants. Everything else, they tend to want to beat them up. I mean, they work them hard and they try to pay as less money as they can possibly get away with. And it's, it's, it's industry wide. It isn't just associated with our facilities, it's industry wide. And, but it's starting to come back to haunt us. Uh, because it's become more and more difficult uh, to get 
seasonal help and or uh, laborer type situations because the pay bills have jumped so much since COVID. I mean, you got restaurants paying at 20 bucks an hour and doing all these things. And, and it's pretty hard to compete when it's 100 degrees and you got a guy in a sand trap shoveling sand. In or eleven dollars an hour, they tend to get a little grumpy. So uh, another trend that's scary is you look at these turf management programs at universities or agronomy programs where they used to have 150 people going through the program every year. Now they have four. Yeah, that's not an exaggeration. It's a, it's a terrifying. Quite honestly, just looking into the future, like well, it's going to be harder and harder. I feel to get people. The sad part about it is the irrigation systems that we're having problems with. Uh, if we don't get them corrected, it just falls back on the personnel and it gets tougher and tougher. And that major league that Ron had at Auburn Hills was probably the scoop that put him over the edge. I mean, he yep. just wore out. And, and when you get on bed at night and you're not sure that you're going to have something left in two days, it's a hard life to live. Uh, he got to the point, I think, where he just said, I'm. And, uh, and I know that because I've been there and done it myself. Uh, I was fortunate enough. I just went other places for a while. You're just getting burned out on those places when you're stressed all the time. So, and it didn't, you know, the guys get out there at six o'clock in the morning. Sometimes they're not gone by six o'clock at night. You know, it's just one of those deals for them. Compensation for our superintendents and for other industry standards. I mean, not, we're not short of them, but you get on down the line, it's a whole different story. But if he's able to get those, those ranges changed, then us as a board have got to come up with the money to pay for it. So, you know, there's, there's a repercussion to doing the things that we want to do. And it's a hard, hard road to hoe sometimes. All right, uh, next is a bunch of jump. Okay, so uh, we've uh, we've talked about, or I've definitely brought up that my goal was to get through a big portion of the year and make sure nothing crazy happened with revenue. Make sure revenue was going to continue on the path that we hope that it would. And once we get to a point where I feel safe, that we're going to be in the position we hope we would be in. I want to go to council and ask for a budget adjustment where we can move some money to some of these projects. Last meeting, we went through the kind of the five-year project plan. Um, so I've kind of put together what. I think would be a good plan of attack for the remainder of this year and for so we can work on projects over the winter. I would like to go to council hopefully September and ask for this adjustment and we'll go over the budget in a minute. But right now we have uh, it's at the end of July uh, about 1.75 billion in the uh, general fund or in the, the balance of the fund golf fund. Um, that August right now we're on track to be about seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars in revenue. September looks strong. Um, we look like we're going to end the year with a around six between six and a half, six point seven million dollar um, dollars in revenue. Last year we did about five and a half. Uh, so I feel like the revenue side of things is really strong. Again, our goal is to reinvest that money. We don't want to end the year with two and a half million dollar account. We've done nothing. We want to reinvest, put it back into courses. So. Um, some of the projects and different purchases that I've identified that I would like to try to knock out over the winter. Um, some of these are small, but they, they still factor in some club outdoors at Auburn Hill, uh, Auburn Hills. It's only $5,000, um, a fence or an add on to the building at, at SIM to store the equipment better. Um, intercom's nothing. I can do that. Um, or right, some, the, there's a new gate that needs to be replaced. Those again are small items. We have two air conditioner units at X. One of those actually is being replaced right now because it quit. I knew that was coming, but it, it quit. So we still have another one that's very old, needs to be replaced for about 10,000. Um, hitting bays outside at SIM, that's a, I get a ton of requests for that. I think it'd be a great addition. 
um, range mats to help improve the quality of our ranges at Auburn Hills, and I'd like to do that at Tex as well. Um, cart path repair is a big one. I've actually upped this number. I forgot to adjust the screen, but you'll see it on the next screen. Um, about two, three hundred and I'm sorry, two hundred fifty thousand dollars is what I put toward uh, cart path improvements this year. Um, D box start the conversion for those and rebuild those at Sim. Um, conversion of some of the T boxes to Zoysia on the on the non par threes. Uh, some of the equipment you know, a rough mower, greens mower. Um, spreader, different things, miscellaneous miscellaneous equipment, um, all together for equipment, I've put about $150,000 in. Um, again, what I would like to do is go to council in September so we can uh, start working on these things over the winter. Um, I wanted to kind of present that idea to you guys and get some feedback from you. Um, I, I feel very confident that we're in a safe place where we can go ahead and start spending some of this money and, and do, knocking out these projects. So I'd like to get your feedback on what you think about that idea and if there's other things i mean i'm looking at probably a half a million dollars is what i was saying five hundred thousand dollars that would be put into the project fund that would be used for i would identify um building improvements course improvements and equipment that we could use that money for any other slant equipment we did we got a uh, fairway mower and one of the heavy duty trucksters the hdx uh, that equipment from Flint, it, it was a little bit higher than what we'd hoped. It was much higher than the last round, which is expected because everything is now, especially in used equipment. Uh, but we still came out. One of the fairway boards that we needed at Mac that was in the third year, I think, of our plan, um, that we're in a spot now where we should be able to go eight years before we need to replace that now. So uh, we saved about $50,000 on that. So we, it did help, not as much as we wanted, but we got some. Uh, the cart path repair that you had on there for 228, you said you upped it up a little bit. Yeah. Did, did that include X, Sims, and Mac? Or yeah, Tex, yeah, that includes all of the, the area between 18 and 10 T box, that big turnaround area, and number one. Um, that's by far the worst sections that we have, I think, in the whole system. Um, and then there's spots identified at each course. Auburn, not so much. Auburn is more bridges than cart path, but at Sim and at Mac, there's smaller sections that need to be replaced where roots have uprooted it and different things. So, yeah, that should get us through those spots. It'd be a heck of a start, at least to get the worst spots covered. And then each year we could we could identify new new areas that we want to replace if that's what we want to do. Could you go Question back to the list, part. please? Thank you. Well, this budget would be sent to council in September. So the execution of these activities would be when? Uh, and once they approve it, then they move. It takes a couple of days to get the money moved to the account where I can access it. And then as soon as I can, depending on how big the projects are, I may have to bid them out. If it's, you know, if it's under $50,000, I would just need to get three quotes. If it's over 50000 I have to actually do a bid process, which takes a while. So the cart path would be the only one really that would uh, have to be bid out. And that would take about a month to get through that process five weeks and jesse this is marcia again can you tell me the process again so if we approve this then what happens if you approve this then i will ask to get on the agenda for a september council meeting um and i would um i would get in front of council go over what what while we were wanting to do this kind of present our case um, they would vote at the council meeting if they approve it then basically i just have to wait for accounting to transfer the funds and then we're we can start knocking these things out it's the same process I went through last year for the clubhouse renovations. Um, and it was, I mean, it's a fairly easy process. I just want obviously to get your input and I need to know what you guys think before I act on that. Thank you. Like in the short term, I mean, when our new cars are coming, those things are a lot faster than those old cars. There's several places out there that they're going to catch air. <laughs> Okay. No, seriously, so are we going to put some flags around those areas so that we don't tear those new cars up before they get two weeks old? Yeah, we. I mean, we have a service plan. They'll fix it. No, you know, <laughs> are we? Uh, yeah, we can identify the worst spots. There's a. There's one spot I know at Mac, one spot at Sim. That the ones at Tex are more just bad pothole type situation. But I know there's a couple of spots at each course that we may block off and put a path around it. Yeah, we definitely don't want to damage the carts right when we get them. Another thing we have to do is get the stumps removed at, 
X. We have about, a, I think it's like 140 stumps that are marked to be removed. We've been waiting. We're working with forestry. They've, they're so far behind. I mean, they have so much work to do, but they're, they're trying to get a schedule. We can get that done. We have a lot of carts that hit stumps there because they're this far out of the ground. Your, your ball, next thing you know, you're, you just busted the whole front end of a cart. So uh, we're working to get those removed. Yeah. Spruce carts would have governors, right? You could govern them down so they didn't go quite as fast. You can, yeah. I can talk to Yama and they'll set them or whatever we we want. I'll let you know what. No, I'll keep one, <laughs> one speedy. Said on there, but it's not that earlier discussed three removal. Mm -hmm. Are we still looking at one this and the contract for that and potentially what that because there's getting worse every day. Right. I'm still I'm still working with forestry with the stumps and with that to try to get a plan over the winter to do as much of that in house and save some money as we can. Um we I mean obviously that's the route I would like to go, but we can't just keep waiting, waiting, waiting. So um I mean, the next step would be to identify what trees need to come down and start getting quotes on that. I don't know how to process that out without going through the process to get bids. Uh, honestly, the pipe is still going in a huge grave, but Sam's just got a lot of elm. It's got a, it's dangerous, a lot of dead in them. Oh. And some of the trees that actually need to come down. And this money, I mean, this is kind of, I'm going to give them this plan. This is what I, I want to do. But I'm, the main thing I want to put, this money is going towards building improvement, course improvement, and equipment purchase. And that's it. So if we decide, hey, you know, the course improvements, we need to bump tree removal in front of hitting bays, whatever, we would have that that ability to do so. Hey, Jesse, um, t help me understand a little bit about why we would want to spend money rebuilding tea boxes at sim right now if the irrigation system is so i mean are we going to just do something that's sort of futile if the irrigation system isn't able to help the new tea boxes do well well he i mean it, just like now he's having to basically manually do it i mean he'll just have to keep doing that that we'll put a grass that's a little bit more durable so you won't hopefully you won't see the effects of uh being so beat down and wore out uh, it, it would still be an improvement. It would be a little bit harder to grow that in because the water is not efficient the way we need, but um, I still think it would just be a manual process where ultimately we would love to be able to just set a timer and walk away. But um, no, we, we would still see the benefit. It's just a harder process for us. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. At 12, what's the purpose here? Where are you at? 12. That's a three bar. It's got some great tees on it. <laughs> three bar up by the road. Okay. I, this came from recommendations from staff. So I'd, I'd look at that one before I did. Okay. I know the back tee box. I don't know the other. I'm trying to think where the other trees are. One front of the back, and then another one gets further down to the right, and it's got great Bermuda grass on them. I don't know. Just from my observation. You play up there where you start 20 yards out. Hey. I can't reach that back tee box. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we would. Yeah. Man, it's terrible. I can understand that. But, uh... I guess what I'm asking if. If there are other things you think are more important, or if you're okay with this, I, I would like to get a vote in the minutes if that's what you guys want to do. I remember from a couple of meetings ago, um, what was the number you were thinking bottom line for the year? Oh, it was a lot less. It was, I only had like, it was close to 50,000, I think, um, because I put a lot of this in 2024. So a lot of this was on the 2024 plan, but we're far enough along doing well enough with revenue that I'm comfortable with moving some of those things to the only question is keep a track of separate funds for cards so we can that's totally that's in a different fund yeah the numbers that we're looking at here that yep that there's an equipment fund that's totally separate there's a cart replacement fund that's totally separate right now the clubhouse renovation fund that's separate and then we have our main budget which is what we're talking about yeah, no, that will not affect that at all. 
Yeah, no, it's those funds are set up where we can't accidentally use it. That, that money is strictly for that one thing. That's it. So worst case scenario is you have to replace the irrigation system at Sim Park next year, say. Mm -hmm. It just goes so bad, can't put band-aids on it anymore. Got to be replaced. You're going to need one and a half, two million dollars to do that. That'd be done or revenue model. And you can commit yourself to three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year. But right. It would eat up. What else you do? No. I mean, the only, yeah. I mean, the, the option is spend the $60,000 for the valves, which is a band aid, but it makes a little bit of better a difference. Or, like, I mean, if we have to pay for that, it's going to have to be a revenue bond. I don't, I don't know. We just don't have the money. So I don't know. That's our million dollar question, $2 million question right now is how do we do that? Yeah, that's the only reason why I wonder if you spend half a million dollars here. Right. I mean, can you get by with some of these things? Maybe for another year, like you said, you had it in 2024 previously. I, I don't know. I'm just right. Just don't. well, I think. I mean, well, yeah. Assuming that it, it seems like the car path is is the biggest one. That right. few hundred, however many thousand dollars that is. Yeah. You can submit this. That needs. You can submit this to the council, and, and they can agree with it. But if the money's not there, you don't have to do it. There's no law says you've got to do it. So. Basically, this is just allowing us to proceed. If have access to the That's all you're talking about. Yeah, there's several projects that if you it comes in under budget, that money is still there in that fund, and you can do an adjustment to move it back or whatever. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, with the irrigation, it's almost if we have to pay for that ourselves, that means we do no other improvements for the next 10 years. And that's not just not realistic. So. Trying to walk that line, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how you. It's a, for the purpose, we're in a bad situation. For the purposes of history, for the for the golf course itself, for all of them. When I came to work for him back in the sixties. We built Pawnee Prairie under revenue bonds. We redone Pawnee Prairie under revenue bonds. We redone Sin Park and Platte Park under revenue bonds. We redone McDonald Park under revenue bonds. And this was all done under revenue bonds. It was all paid for in revenue bonds by the golf system. This is the second time that I've ever heard of this ever going to the CIP for money, and that was the first time around. I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, the city allowed us to buy some cards through the CIP money from the last time before, or well, this time. Well, I've only been here about a year or so, oh, but yeah, right. sorry, not to, <laughs> not to dodge. But. Last time we got cards was under the CIT, and they actually bought it because they got bad. They never had money because of all the strife that was caused by staff downtown and, and overdone. We overstretched our abilities of pay when you did all our nails. But we were still paying revenue bonds for. McDonald Park still paying revenue bonds on Pawnee Prairie, and we decided to build Auburn Hills. Well, that killed the system. Before to do all that, obviously, revenue bond is not the ideal situation because now, now you're committing. You don't know what's going to happen two years from now. Revenue goes down, and you're committed to 250 grand that year or whatever it is. So it's that's not the direction we want to go. But in an emergency situation, I don't know what else we can do. If you have to go that way, then it bites into what you're talking about right here. This money has to then be transferred into. And so, you know, we'll go over this in a second when I do the finance update. But even so, I expect we're going to be, again, to 2.3 million, whatever, in the plus by the end of the year. If we take this 500 out, we're still at about 1 1.8, 1.7, 1 1.8 in the rev in the fund. Um, and then it. I don't want to commit to this, but the clubhouse renovations, Kevin and I have kind of re, redone that process from the way the architects and everybody wanted to do it. We're doing it a lot more in-house, and I think we're going to come in under budget on that project. So we'll have some leftover funding from that money. I think we're not quite done, but um, that we will have access to as well. Yeah. Oh, so. 
that you're able to need to do in terms of contractual pay and what have you that we allow enough money in there to be able to pay more money if we can get it through those. Right. I want to add that mechanic position. That's a that's a priority for next spring, and then uh, yes, continuously try to increase the wage. I can't let's start with the revenue bonds. We could only do one course every five years or so. Yeah, and basically, it actually is. They stretch them out a little bit longer now. If I'm right, they, they don't go five years. I'm honestly not sure how we would set it up for this one, but. I mean, yeah, some I've been working on ones for park that are like 10 years. Stuff like that. Yeah. It used to be either 10 or 15 years. So by then, we'd, by years, then we'd be screwed. Even on a 10 year, looking at 200,000 here that we've committed to. I'm not going to. You'd like to think that you're always going to be there. That you're not. Can't wait 30 years to get them all done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, if we had irrigation systems that were good, we'd be in so such good shape right now. We would be able to really, really start and making improvements. But that's always going to hang over our head till we figure it out, and it keeps us from doing what we need to do. If we are too late for capital improvement money, money for this year. I think we need to really make a push forward to try to get next year some help next year. So if we spent this year on our irrigation system, more than that. Two. 250, 260. And that, I mean, there's so many little repairs that are that's 1,500, 3,000. And that's not including the labor that went into it, all the hours they spent doing it, and the time the horse suffered because of that. You know, it didn't, I did talk to her the other day about the fact that when these cattle had a break, you start figuring costs every time. I mean, figure your labor costs. If you got a tractor, what the rental cost is, what the parts costs are, potential down. So that our next presentation, maybe we can say exactly. Look at your parts. We spent one hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars last year trying to repair this thing. You know? It's going to so be have the same or more every year. Yeah, it's just a definitive number that says we're here and getting worse. Yes, on on this, what I would be asking for is just if, of course, any any other comments or questions you have. But if you agree or disagree, and I'd like to have a vote in the minutes, if if that's the direction you guys want want to go. Well, the sixty thousand that was being asked for sounds uh, the new heads and, and gates and switches. That's not on here. It's not, but it, again, we would still be on 1.7, 1.8 million in the good, so we would have the funds to do that if that's the direction we need. Uh, so the way and now I talked about this in the beginning to me, one million dollars is our zero. I don't ever want our golf account to go under a million dollars. Just you never know what's going to happen. So even with doing this, we're going to be well ahead of my bottom line zero where we don't want to go below. Um, so that's that's why I say I feel like we're to a point in this year where I feel safe with making this request. Where they may not need the band aids that Sim needs right now. Sim is by far the worst. Um, and then Tex is behind that. Um, Auburn, I mean, we had that main irrigation line, but it, it's it's not the nightmare Sim and Tex are. Um, and Mac, miraculously, actually, is we don't have as many irrigation now that we've placed the pump there and done that. Yeah, I need to shut up. I'm going to jinx. <laughs> Really has not many problems with that one as we have the others, but they're still really old and they could start tomorrow. I mean, that's a problem. You got something that old, eventually it's going to happen. Make sixty thousand dollar band aids on. Yeah. On the band. Okay, favor of the car with this. Thank you. I mean, right here in your line item six, there's irrigation repair listed. I mean, you're hundred. Ninety thousand dollars and stuff. That's all listed. That's previously in there. Are you so they they're, they're actually already budgeted for these. So what do you heard of us? Isn't that where you're at right here under materials and supplies, components and parts? Aren't you getting material? Isn't that where you're putting in your irrigation retardal? Oh yeah, yeah. But that also there's 
contractuals that are in there. So they divide that up. So that's only the material part of it. That's not the thousands of dollars to pay someone to come in and fix this and their time and all that. So yeah, that's a chunk of it. It's not all of it. And there is money already previously put into the budget for that purpose, repairs. But the problem is we're getting to the point where we're outstripping what they've been actually Budget for. I actually, at the beginning of this year, I put a programming option to increase that by $250,000 just because I know there's no way around. If we don't get it repaired, we're going to have to throw money constantly at it to stay alive. So next year's budget should have a little bit more in that line. Next motion that we approve the Jesse to move forward with this to the city council, get approval. I have a second. 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 All in favor, we say aye. 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 Yes, and Marcia said aye. Marcia did <laughs> say aye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next would be equipment replacement fund. This would just be a adjustment to the number. Okay, when he's pulling this up, um, what, uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, as you know, currently we have a, um, for every public paying green fee, not not member rounds, but all of our green fee paying green fee rounds, $1 of every green fee goes into our equipment replacement fund, which is what we use to buy equipment. And um, right now we've had, so far in this year, we've done roughly 60,000 rounds. Some of those are nine hole rounds, so it's not exact. Um, and right now we, we've put about 45,000 this year in the equipment replacement fund. $45,000 on equipment doesn't buy a front tire on some of the stuff. So um, that's their eight months of the year. So what I would like to do is increased, increase the, not increase the price of the green fee. The customers won't see any difference here. What this would do is $3 instead of $1 into this fund uh, that would go into that that equipment replacement fund. So, so far this year, instead of having 45, we would be at about 120,000. Um, this, this money, we, it's still our money. It doesn't change anything. It just allows us to use the money to buy equipment without having to go through 500 steps to get the budget adjustment and, and so forth. So with this equipment from Flint Hills, uh, to, in order to get that, it was a quick turnaround. It almost did not happen. I have nightmare trying to get on the agenda um, that quick to get that approved. Um, there's a lot of meetings and people had to do a lot of things that weren't the typical pattern um, to make that happen. And I was, I was appreciative that they did. I'm not going to be able to do that. When something comes up, having that money there to be able to buy the equipment, most of our money is going to go to equipment. Anyway. We identified in the five-year plan, there was tons of money that's going towards equipment. So again, we're not losing this money. It just makes it a lot easier that when we get to a point, where we need to buy a piece of equipment, we can do so without having to let to delay the process two months before we can do it. When we just did that, what you're going to the council to ask for listed at the end. Is that outside of this fund then, or is that still inclusive in this fund? That would move. You're saying that's outside of this fund. Then? That's outside, yes. Yeah, this continues to grow. Um, that 500,000 would be. If there's equipment we need to buy, um, you know, I mean, we we bought greens mowers, we bought a sprayer, we bought some equipment. And it's getting better. We, we still have a ton of old, quite frankly, garbage equipment that we need to replace. So um, this would just give us a little bit of a head. That five hundred thousand is kind of give us a head start, where we can get some of the most important pieces, and then this would be something that just continuously builds up over time as we need it. The money's there to replace the equipment. Uh, we go through this possible or are we going to start putting some of the old equipment into the city auction we we are putting some in in september um and then we're going to put uh, a lot more in in the april uh yeah we've we've identified several pieces for from text for the uh september auction and then we're going to do a big overhaul this winter and get it all ready for the april auction i've been talking with uh our finance people to get that prepared and be ready for the next auction Okay, if it went into the auction, 
it moved. Is it possible then to put that on purple wave or something like that? It, it is purple wave. That's what we're That's doing. That's where they're options are. Yes. Any? But, uh, we have a motion because I think this is a good idea. Uh, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. Let me understand. Why is it so difficult when we approved the purchase of the equipment coming in from that it took so much effort to get that money released? This doesn't make oh, sense he, to me. I mean, City our, our frustration <laughs> is we have to operate as an enterprise fund. So we have to operate on one side like a private business, but on the other side, we can't operate like a private. We have to go through the steps that we have to go through. But our our budget is still the city's still on the hook for our budget. So if we go, we lose a ton of money, they're still on the hook. So they, we still have to follow the processes. And most people, they, they're getting all their money from tax money, most of the other departments. So they have to monitor and make sure. Ours is different because we know we've got money coming in. We're having a great year, but we still have to go through those processes um, because it's still through the through the city. I don't know a better way to explain that. It's just that's what's in place. That's not going to change. Unfortunately, I, I would love to tell you, yeah, we're going to change that, but we're not. But is there anything that's good for that if it takes you that much effort to actually use the money that we approve? What are we doing here? Well, we're we're. I mean, the the deal with Flint was an emergency deal. I think I'd, what. We need to do is make sure we're all looking down the future so we can be ahead of stuff. So, like with this 500,000, that's why I want to do that now so we can do it over the winter instead of waiting to the winter and then we're trying to hurry up spend and we're delayed too much. So, once so, it's at the equipment fund, then you can use it that well, right? That's right. Then you have no issue. That's right. Well, that, that's a no brainer. That's, that's all I'm trying to do right now. Find other accounts you can do that with. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. The purposes of budgeting, the city still does line item budgeting. And so you put a number in the line item, you try to overspend it, you've got to go completely through the process and everybody in the city gets to say, well, you can do it or not, it seems like. Yeah. And so consequently, you can, when you under budget a line item, it's hell to pay to begin. And I mean, they just beat you to death trying to get it. So I had a $48,000 purchase, kicked back over $18. It was $18 over that, what was in that line item, and it got kicked back, and it took a month to get it back where it needed to be. He offered so, to it himself. I, I did. They run, I, did. I don't care. But what I, well, all I'm trying to do with these two things is to get ahead where we don't have to do that. We we have the leniency to, to make moves as we see fit. Make the motion then to go ahead and move into $3. And you come up with $3. Well, it... So on our budget, it is going to show three dollars less in the in the revenue because it's going to go directly into that account. So the money there are two dollars difference. Yes, so it it will have a little bit of pack, a little bit of impact on what the budget looks like. Even though we still have the money, we didn't lose the money. It's just put into a fund that can only be used for equipment. So I don't want to three dollars to me is a significant increase. Allow it two dollars. We could do two dollars. We could do three. We could do four. But three dollars to me is a significant increase. It gives us some leniency without affecting the budget that much. To me, it was just kind of a happy medium to act. I mean, if we did it fifty cents, so we would say, yeah, we're, make, we're raising it, but it's really not going to get us where we need to be. So I want to make sure if we do this, we're doing enough to actually make an impact. Look at that. Do have that money that comes in? I think November. I think I get the record for that. Yep. So remember, you're also going to have about eighty thousand dollars there. So you're actually going to look at, in theory, two hundred thousand dollars if if you were doing the whole for the whole year. Yeah. Or actually more than that. Yeah. But again, a fairway mower is eighty thousand dollars. Yes. I would say a motion. Never say I. Jesse, this is, Jesse, this is just. Say? I answered record of it. Is that a question? What's that? Just moving like that equipment replacement funds not on the income statement. It's right, right. So it'll show that we made less revenue, but I can start giving you balance for all these. Comes out of the members too. No, just, no public. Just, yeah. So the members pay the fifty dollars once a year. Um, yeah, that's we okay. covered that several months ago. Where we moved the fifty dollars. I think it was wasn't. It? We went from 37 to 50. 
All right, there's next up. Oh, this one. Um, if I could interrupt for a second, I am going to have to leave the meeting for a personal obligation. So uh, hopefully we've gotten the two votes done that were really needed this week. I hope. Yes, but everything else that I had was just information. OK, I'll look at that in the minutes then and I will see you guys all soon. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you. Marcia. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so I believe are we good to go to the finance update? <laughs> Okay. Nope. That November collection from the members. That money carry over. Yeah, it's in there until we carry okay. it. Yep. All right. So looking at Browns, um, you can see it's uh we're still I was at Tex on Monday. I actually teed off at like 620 to play nine holes with a buddy of mine that was in town and teed off in the dark. Got done with nine holes in the parking lot was packed. So I went inside and I said, how many rounds do you have booked? They had 309 rounds booked on Monday. I mean, it's just crazy. So anyway, rounds are up 13% from our record year last year um, and continue to just, there's no sign that they're going to slow down. So 117,000 rounds um, so far. And then again, this is just through the end of July, so through seven months. Um, so July, looking at July alone, we did 23,000 rounds. See, Tex and Auburn both did over 6,000 rounds. Auburn's got a great job. Auburn's been up significantly this every month this year. So um, up 17% last month. Tex was crazy last year, and they were crazy again this year. Um, the other two were, the other three were pretty much right on track. So um, cart rentals were at 817,000 this year. Last year we were at 737. Um, the cart replacement fund, the $2 that goes into that, that account is going up extremely quickly, which is exactly what we want. So we're in really good shape of that. Um, food and beverage, um, Kevin's going to talk about to a point now. I'm going to talk about the clubhouses in a second, too, with the renovations to, to go. So he's got his menu. We're going to roll that out. Uh, we'll, we'll go over that. I'll save that for him. But food and beverage, you can see Auburn leading by 154000 um, that's at almost five dollars thirty cents per round of golf. Again, they have some banquets and events that are non-golf related that helps, but uh, still really good. Four hundred twenty-six thousand this year versus three hundred sixty-two thousand, eighteen percent up over last year. And that's really before we've unfortunately been held up from month after month after month with the renovations, but we're we're there. Uh, driving range one hundred thirty-six thousand uh, compared to last year, one hundred twenty-one thousand, thirteen percent increase. Um, and, and Mac, it's been first tee. Of course, they paid for the range. It's there. So when they have programming, it's closed. They've done a ton of programming. So if that range was open as much as we had locked, and I'm going to work with them over the winter to try to work something out to get that open a little bit more, that would be even would be much more. So, but still very successful. Merchandise, um, 270,000 over 237. And you guys know 95% of this goes to the pros, but it just shows. Uh, what we have coming through the clubhouses and Sam, you can see is way down. That's because they've been under renovation. Kent's brand new. Uh, so we're just now uh, over the last month really started to see a big increase in his sales. Member count. So we did the increase June, July 1st. Um, as we went through all 2000 accounts or whatever it was, we we really cleaned it up. So some of these numbers aren't exactly a representative of where we're at because we had some that were it was a nightmare um and <laughs> it was kind of a good exercise to spend that those four weeks every day cleaning that up but still we're 18 17 we've had several new members at the beginning of this month um that aren't reflective here so we're we really didn't lose much um revenue wise we came out ahead even with a little bit of a drop off in the numbers where our revenue was was a little bit ahead and as we build that back up it's it's gonna pay off um so um Happy with that. And then total revenue, July alone, 765,000. Um, June, we did 800,000. We're at 3.8 um, compared to 3.4 last year. So 450, almost $460,000 up over last year. Uh, looking at last year's numbers, August, September, October, I think we're going to blow those away. Um, we're definitely on track to, to beat 
August of last year. And then in September, we've got some big events, new events that are going to bring in some revenue. So I think we're going to be, we're going to continue that pattern. And, and my guess, we're going to be in six and a half, six point seven million um, in revenue. See any idea mm -hmm. on the big couples member jump? I think that's an error. I think we counted both members of the couple instead of just the total couples membership. We're just padding the books. That's all. Uh, stay going on. Question. Yes, sir. Passing your problems trying to come up with to get all that through your system. What's the status on the new system? And is it still staying within budgeted money? Yeah, though we. I mean, we pay too much for our system now, and the new system is going to be about the same price. So it's not going to change that much on the budget. But we're going to do that over the winter. Um, we've got the RFP ready. I'm going to start putting it out over the next couple of weeks to get through that process so we can do the implementation probably January or February, hopefully January, um, when it's slow and we can, it, that is so hard to do when it's 309 rounds coming through and you're trying to learn. Right. Still within what? That is. Charges. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. For this crummy system. Yeah, well, we pay the system. We don't, I mean, yeah, IT will change. We pay the company that we get that uh, system from, and the new provider will just take that payment over. It's, they're almost, they haven't really went up. We may actually see a decrease in the payment, what we pay. So that is, if I don't do anything this winter, that will get done, I promise you. That's my number one goal for the Darius in agreement. All right, so looking at the, the budget from, from finance, um, I'm gonna look at this, I can see it better. Okay. Um, so the big difference between this and what I showed you, what I was showing you on the previous slides is everything that comes through our system. That's everything that runs through CIP, which is our operating system. Um, the way finance does it on the merchandise side, they only show 5% of the merchandise as revenue is or i show 100 percent, and then i show a 95 percent expense so it, that's where the number is a little bit different but still uh, to hit our budget we only need about 1.5 1.6 uh, million and we're going to hit 780,000 this month um in august so we're going to well exceed that um i think we'll be a million and a half above budget uh, the way we're tracking uh, expenses i don't see any real problems there we're at 60 percent this is through 58% of the month, so um, a little bit high, but again, that goes down in the last couple of months of the year, so no worries there. Um, total contact contractuals without the expenses, the unexpected expenses of the uh, irrigation, we would be under budget, which is um, still we're almost dead on. Uh, materials supplies the same. I don't. There's nothing that that scares me on those those numbers. Um, if you guys see something, have a question, please ask. Um, I mean, of course, with more revenue becomes becomes more expense. So our expenses are up a little bit, but in, in relation to revenue, um, we're we're doing a lot better this year. Um, yeah. Any any questions? Any anything you see on this you want to discuss? Okay. Yeah, I think I had yeah a couple of things. I've told you about the parts that'll start being delivered Monday. So a little bit about the clubhouse renovations. Been to the courses. Um, you know, STEM is pretty well done. Um, there's a couple little minor things. Kevin's going to talk about the kitchen. It's almost done. If you've been to Tex, it's uh, they're they're busting through it. They probably have six weeks left. I mean, there's that's their goal when we have a meeting this Thursday. Okay, so um, there's new paint all throughout the inside, new flooring. We've cut the built the wall behind the ladies' locker room and cut the hole in the pro shop to go to the simulator. And I can tell you the buzz for that simulator is a lot. There's so many people that are asking about that. So we're working to try to make sure we get the best um, simulator for what we're what we're trying to accomplish. There's a hundred options out there. So we're demoing and going through them. Once we we use one, it'll, it'll be a quick install. Um, so if you, and they're gonna start on the outside of the building next week-ish, a couple weeks maybe. Um, that's paint. That's everything. So um, that one we do have a general contractor. Um, so we're kind of at their mercy. At Mac started yesterday, and I have never seen that type of work get done so fast. They came in yesterday morning. Nothing changed. They left yesterday. The whole thing was painted. Um, at ten o'clock this morning, the painter's done. 
painter's done. The ceiling people are coming tomorrow to put grids in for the drop ceiling. Uh, once the grids in, HVAC and electrical are doing or and electrical are doing what they need to do, and then they'll come back and put the tiles. Flooring is right behind that. Um, once the flooring's in, we're moving everything out to the main area, and we're going to put the offices in the where the pro shop is now. Um, it's all lined up one after another. We saved a ton of money by not going with a general contractor, and Kevin's been huge. He's been on site, basically just keeping these people moving, and and they they're doing a great job. So uh, very happy um, with how that's finally going. Um, of course, you know we went through eight months of going through architect and all this stuff, and it came back way over budget. Kevin and I just said, you know what? Forget it. Let's do it ourselves and we saved a ton of money. I think we're going to come in under budget on the whole, the whole, all the clubhouse renovations. Uh, give you an update on junior golf. Our course conditions, as you mentioned at Sim, um, I've gotten nothing but positive comments over the last six weeks on course conditions and how they, especially Mac and Sim, where they were at in the spring compared to now. Um, I played, again, I played nine holes at Tex on Monday morning. Um, other than being there way too early and it being really wet, uh, it was uh, the course is in great shape. So hopefully you guys agree and have, have, are seeing the same thing. Um, and the new maintenance equipment, it's starting to show up. The mowers that we ordered, um, we've got all except for the two mower, the greens mowers at Auburn. We're still waiting on those. Um, I think everything else, one MDX part. Uh, the structure that's going to be, go to Mac that's not in. I think everything else is in the sprayer at Tex. And I'm probably forgetting something, but everything else is, is finally come in. So uh, we're, we're in a much better place. Not great, but the main pieces of equipment are, are starting to get better. Yeah, that's all I got for that. Any any questions or yep? Simulator at Tex. That I can't remember. That was inclusive in the renovation cost, right? So yes. Basically paid. For. It's paid for. Yeah, we're using all the the clubhouse renovation money for that, so there's no expense to our budget on that. But I think there will be a significant impact with revenue. Based on how that goes, I'm assuming that's really going to be a popular thing in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. uh, that changing the way it is over McDonald Park back in the old men's locker room, would it be possible to convert that into one if the uh, there's a lot of small room at Mac. That's the problem. There's a lot of room, but they're blocked off in small sections, and you need a pretty good area. Um, we'll see how that goes. If it goes as good as I hope, then yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Well, all those old boxes back at Mac, you know, convert that to use Mac. At Mac. Mac doesn't have that. They used to have a locker room back there. Uh, what the happened to it? Somebody steal it? <laughs> There's a bathroom. It's pretty small. At one time, it was going to be an office, but it's not big enough. For Somewhere with the club repair room? Where all the club repairs are, yeah. Oh. I don't know. On Mac. They divided that room at one time. Yeah. They cut it into, it's three rooms from the club repair room back. Oh, and yeah. and it goes at a funky angle. It's like 45 degrees. Yeah, the, but it's, it's whole bit straight. kind of turns, and there's just a room, and then a room, and a room, and it, yeah. It, one of the it ends one at of the park. Room. You just push over if you so we that's an option uh if it if this simulator goes well I'm, i really want to look at trying to add more or whatever we have to do but i almost what's that doing one for now yeah the space again is just like we could put two but i don't i'm it makes me nervous that it would be way too tight in there we are, we are in the process of clearing out the very back room at Tex right now. We've already filled up one dumpster. They dumped like a 30-yard rollaway dumpster. Um, they brought it back, so we're going to go back Friday and finish that out. But there's a huge space back there. The problem is there's three rows of lockers that have a pedestal, a concrete pedestal. And we found out when we took the other ones out, there's rebar all through that. Like, it's not just knock it out. It is. The, con the contractor said normally they would do that on top of the floor. It's built into the floor. So they came in there with jackhammers. At tax. So there, there's opportunity. Let's just see how this goes, and then we'll we'll look at addition addition to more later. The first tee is tiny. Uh, the starting they're building there at the at Mac. So I just uh, talked to them. I, I I don't want to say something incorrectly. They're getting closer. They have a certain number of donations they need to get to before they can break ground, and they're getting 
much, much closer. So I was wondering, um, were they planning on putting simulators in there? I mean, can we it looked, they have that monitors, or? not simulators. I don't think they have a lot of monitors um, and they have. So they're they're going to have a two or three bays that hit out of the building, kind of through garage doors that will have technology, but it, you won't be hitting into a actual. You won't be able to play courses, do all that. It'll be strictly for instructional. I did play there today. First time I played there in several months. That course was immaculate. Yeah, he's done it. Tell us, uh, be sure and pass that on. And I'd That's like to get it prepared for this place. But they're doing a great job. Especially with the volume of golf for season. Yeah. Yeah. 6 a.m. to 8.30. Yes. Yes. Are holding their own. Uh, there is something I would like to see us do is uh, to check and see if they have actually have a spinner style top dresser. If they had a spinner style top dresser where they could do a little light top dressing because heat like this creates heat. Uh, they don't put as smooth as they would normally if you're mm -hmm. light top dressing, but the top dressers that they used to have, and a lot of them were the belt type and the six foot drop it. it's hard to regulate them on those so it's something that you might ask him and see if he that, oh. put that in your equipment because if we can find some spanner top dressers they would really be great i know he's so industrious he'd use them i'm going to be i haven't set a date yet but i'm going to have a uh, superintendent's meeting that obviously i'll invite you to and any of you guys that want to come but that's something we can discuss there as well it'll be on the next two weeks so, yeah, but I'll, I'll ask prior to that as well. I just want to get it out of work. I thought it was tremendous. It's hard to make me think that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, these guys are doing, they're, man, they, they're working. I mean, you know, but I talk to them every day. And, you know, every time I call, they're having to shut a piece of equipment down and talk to me. I feel guilty. I'm like, I, I shouldn't have bothered you. Like, sorry. You know, so, but I mean, they're, they're going after it and they're there all day, every day. So definitely kudos to staff. Lucky to have I was going to give a comment to, to Scott. Um, our McAdams Golf Club had our annual tournament this past weekend at Auburn. Uh, we had like 93 golfers, and as you know, uh, that tournament is you know associated with other uh, tournaments that are starting in Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up to Illinois. And the report from the back is that um, Auburn is the best course. Thanks, Scott. Mike. Thank you, Ron. On we, we had a spinner chop dress that we got planned a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, off of their lease, so. Yeah, I mean, you can buy all you want, but they still got to have enough help to do it. So. Um, but I mean, they could still co op that equipment if you yeah. want to do a light top dressing with that spinner to Toro. So thank you, Robert. Unfortunately, the big grass greens, when you get into this, Humid type of weather, uh, they seem to swell like the fingers, you know, when you're going to grab the club or the bat. So the same thing happens to the grass top like this. My top dressing kind of fills in that nappy area, and so they put a lot smoother. They're like a vertical cut, kind of. Excuse me. Like a vertical cut. Uh, it's a little different type of a theory, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. A lot of people have already gotten top dress you can together. You just, yeah, with the birdie cutting, you're trying to pull it out versus the light top dress, and you, you're kind of working it down into that matting area. To, but to, trying to put on top, you don't ever want to fall asleep. Any other, any other questions, comments? Okay. We're done. Uh, we do have Scott, if you'd like to make some comments here. He's got... Okay. Yeah. A couple things. Wow. Buy a new one. Go buy a new one. <laughs> How about it? It's in the budget. You didn't see it. Like for Scott. Good afternoon. Scott Weller, a golf professional at Auburn Hills. A little update. As Robert alluded to, this weekend we hosted the 90 third annual McAdams golf tournament and probably in my eight years, seven years, seven or eight years of hosting this, probably one of the smoother events. What this 
organization does. I mean, there were gentlemen here from Omaha, Kansas City, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Dallas. I'm sure I'm missing some others, but great event, great hospitality, good fun had by all. Wasn't as hot as it could have been. Luckily, it wasn't on the weekend before. But again, that's just kind of a lead into, I mean, and I'm sure Robert kind of saw some of the, the side effects, especially on the F&B side. We went from 11 staff members to two and a half. And the half is going back to school this week. And one of those two is somebody that's returning to the city of Wichita that worked for us at SIM worked with me at sim what seven years ago just looking for some part-time help so we're really down to two retirees and one girl that's going to work part-time on wednesday evenings and saturdays and sundays um starting thursday we lose both of our college kids in the golf ship golf shop so we go from six employees down to four maintenance staff i mean poor neil poor ron i mean they are just going to get decimated so it's an ongoing issue that there's there's no answer and i work with darius you know looking at the portal looking at neogov just trying to find any sense or just any relief and i'm just going to be honest they're not there there's zero um just did have a, a young man that's a high school student that by chance just overheard us talking and he did apply but when you're running and yesterday, as busy as it was, and I sent Jesse a text because I saw him on the T sheet. He wins the one man scramble, and now he's getting ready for the tour. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yesterday, I mean, for a Monday, for heaven's sakes, I mean, as busy as text was, we did 268 rounds ourselves with four employees and one outside service. So football practice starts, we lose one of their staff, which didn't indicate that he was going to be on. So, you know, that one closing staff outside did the range parts. So, but, but the, sh the shortcomings that we have is I roll golf shop staff outside. I stay so that we can get 70 carts put away, get the range picked, gates locked, water jugs taken down. It's just, and everybody's, whether it's Max M Tex, I mean, they're all feeling the pains of, no staff and i don't see a bright future in it you know as we look forward you know next week you know we've got a couple events we've got a couple really large events coming up before we get to the end of uh, end of august we get a little bit of a break with airification and then we come back and we got a pretty heavy tournament schedule in the latter part of september and the first part of october so um things are looking great on the new standpoint but from, from the workload and the efforts that it's going to take from staff to get that accomplished, it's a little bit tires. So, I mean, we're all a little bit on edge, but we continue to get it done. Um, things are going well. Um, food and beverage this weekend, I didn't hear anything but compliments on the, the new grill that Jesse bought for us for, uh, from Hooray um, Box Lunches. So Kevin's done a good job with, you know, getting us some, you know, items on the menu that are selling. So, I mean, hats off to Kevin. Looking forward to, you know, what he gets at Tex Mac and, and Sim to so that they can maybe get some of those food and beverage numbers up to the par level of what? 350? Five. They got a ways to go. So anyway, that's all I have. If you have any questions. Is there any chance to have some of the volunteers pitch into some of the things like picking the range, bringing water out to the water jugs, stuff like that, that is relatively easy things to have some of the volunteer help do some of that stuff possibly, or would that, would that help take some load up? I mean, I don't know, I'm just asking. I mean, if, if, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to comment on that. It, we, yeah, when they're there, we can, we just, you know, if they call in or something, we can do about it. If they said they're not going to show, so we still have to try to schedule for that. Now, when they're there, yeah, as long as they're not doing something, running some machinery or something, we go. Obviously, we can't do that for, I think it hurts. It's volunteer, but we can. It's just, 
you never know when they're going to drop off, or so it's hard to plan for that. And I want labor over kind of at their mercy. Yeah, I, I know that's not the answer. I just thought maybe part of a band aid to help in the meantime. All right. Well, I was going to refer to you because I don't. We don't use volunteers for positions that, that we typically hire. Ideally, we'd like to have them, but I mean, and we have some that if we we asked them, they would probably do it. But that starter marshal program or the volunteer program is holding its own, but it hasn't really elevated to the numbers that we need seven days a week. I mean. They pick and choose. I mean, they're all senior members, so they're all playing golf. Just want the, the benefits. I think a big impact on helping control the courses. So we're asking them to step away from that. Now we're kind of losing what we were, what their intention was. So um, as an operative, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We can't keep them there. Um, all said they're not. I'm just gonna be honest. They've all said they're not dealing with those people anymore. It's not worth it. They get you know someone you know. Hey, can you do that? And they just get cussed out. So it's I talked to several, um, and then back we're we on them. We have some that are really good, and the ones that we have are good. We just can't get to them. get the numbers up. So keep working on that. For Jesse to do more Facebook videos. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. What have you got to go on here, guy? Okay. You got some some other places there. Oh, I mean, kind of told you the main updates we have are the cards coming, the clubhouse is being done. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, other than extremely uh, busy. So we'll go to the F and B. Kevin, if you want to put that hat on now. Yep. Look at that. the hats. I did see where you opened the kitchen window back there at Sam. I did. It. Did that myself. Yeah. Before we get to that, um, I am wearing some different hats. So my office is at Tex, but while we're doing that construction there, I'm kind of the construction liaison for the supervisor. And in the two days I haven't been there, I've gotten calls and texts from Steve every day about the supervisor, the, the construction. Eli asked him this, so he's getting with me. So I do need to be there, but I've got to be in other places too. So at Mac, um, like Jesse said yesterday, I got uh, our painter in. He kicked some butt and was in and out real quick. It looks real good. Tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I've got the ceiling guy and I already met with the electrician and the HVAC and they are right behind because they all want to, one thing's got to be done before the next guy. So the first thing was paint, get him out of our way. And then, so I've got the next three guys and then Jesse has the flooring. It's a done deal, I believe. And we're trying to coordinate that because the the issue with it is how do we check people in when we're taking the entire clubhouse and blocking it? Because they can't they can't touch that floor once they start. They can't walk in that entire area. So we're gonna have we're figuring a new way to funnel them through the west entrance, and it's gonna be a little awkward. I'm building a temporary concession stand tomorrow at um, Mac. Eduardo called me when we were in this. He moved the computer today, so that is all moved over. So going to be tight and a little funky and I've got Colin's stuff all squished in the middle but it is what it is right now so that that's moving along um the last thing I need at sim I've got one more piece of equipment which last time I looked it'll be delivered the 26th and then I have to get power run I wait till I get the equipment to have them run the power because in the past in opening restaurants we've gone off the specs of the equipment they put in a certain type the amount of power I need and the plug and then it doesn't match and it's not worth doing twice and the electrician's not going to do it for free so i just wait for the piece of equipment to get there have them run the power so i have one more which is a grill coming in and then i will be able to run what i put together as a menu 
we've talked about the fact I can't find people. Um, the posting for, for Scott has been up for three months. I have a total of 54 applicants. I haven't had another one in three and a half weeks. The only three that had any experience didn't care about an interview. I texted them, I called them, I emailed them, no response, which seems to be the way things go. It's in the higher paying position, that's up to... That goes up to 1750 or something like that, and I still can't get anybody. And from my experience leaving the full service restaurant business, my key cooks were all making 20 bucks an hour, and that's what they want. And the fact that come winter time, hours get cut way down, it, it's tough to find somebody. So I came up with this menu that this can all be executed almost as easily as a hot dog. Um, that new oven, that turbo oven is in, it's plugged in, it's ready to go. I have not messed with it yet. So once I get time, when Mac is done and this last piece of equipment in, I will have a training session, bring in all this food, teach everybody to make it. And really nothing should take more than two and a half minutes to make. It's it's a very limited. The pizza was added by Jesse's suggestion. He had one of these ovens, either in Virginia or Texas or some state he was in, I don't know, both. And he doubted it when they told him they were going to make a pizza in there. And then he ate it and said, that's as good as any pizza I've ever had. And it took two minutes to make. So it's really just throwing toppings on, throwing in the oven, boom, ready to go. So this menu... I'm not going to make any promises on time when I get the time and Mac and I get the equipment in and Sim and I can get the entire crew, whoever's left when school starts in there because I have to teach everybody. The only advantage I do have at Sim is there's an employee there named Roddy who currently works about 30 hours a week and he has a ton of restaurant experience. So that's going to help me at Sim that I have one person to kind of guide things and maybe do the food ordering for me and stuff like that because he's done stuff. I've been a kitchen manager in the past. That has a lot of experience doing that. So keeping it simple right now, I really need to find somebody at Auburn to, um, I will want, I do want to give kudos to Scott and his staff. When I've been doing a lot of these banquets, they learned it. He did one last week without me. He's got one tomorrow without me. He did McAdams without me. And thank you very much because I've got 27 hats to change into. Um, but it has helped that the people he does have can can pull these things off without me. If I have to be there, I'll be there and I offered to be there, but you said he's got it. In fact, that one tomorrow kind of shrank a little bit. Something for military, something. I'm not sure what that group is, but um, but coming up November, I think, November, December, January, and February, we have weddings. We have uh the Evergy retirees. They do a once a year thing. We're serving plated, plated, delivered to the table, 160 guests in December. That's going to take up the entire clubhouse. So all hands on deck. I'll take volunteers to bring plates out. Um, we pulled one off once before with a, about a 50 person wedding where I plated and three of them ran them out and it went pretty smooth. So I, I don't have a problem preparing the food, but if I had a real cook back there to help me, it would be a lot easier. So hopefully I find that person. Evan tried and whoever he talked to never applied. <laughs> but it's it's just tough going in the restaurant industry coming from the full service. You had to pay people that much to keep them because they could go to the restaurant next door and get that money tomorrow if you don't. They walk into your office and say, I want another $2 raise. And really, that was up against a wall. So there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You got to keep the good people. So once I find someone, we'll do what we have to do to keep them when we get a good person at every one. But I really only need, Auburn needs a full time. The rest of them I can teach and we keep it simple. Um, and then just not going to do a whole lot with beverage choices till spring comes. I don't want to mess things up because we're going to be moving coolers, moving, rearranging um, all three golf courses that you saw at Sim. I pulled that window out. I don't know if you went back in the kitchen. Um, I sent Jesse a picture one day because I gutted it. And he's like, you did that today? I said, yeah, I just started. Now, some of it, some of those cabinets, because they've been there for, I don't know when Sim 
clubhouse open. Some of them, when I started pulling them apart, just kind of crumbled in my hands because <laughs> they just waterlogged in garbage. So we're we're handling that stuff on our own. We're saving a ton of money. Um, Scott, we'll have 20 bucks left over from that renovations to put into your course. <laughs> it's a lot both gifts. Since you got the Taj Mahal over there anyway. <laughs> Um, I said, we're doing what we can. It's a slow process. In the meantime, I'm hoping Jesse feels I've helped him out a lot with this construction stuff because I've opened 27 restaurants in my career and I know a lot about opening restaurants and dealing with contractors. So I think that's helped out a lot that he can still run the golf division and not have to worry about it. And he walks into Mac the other day and went, holy crap, that all happened today. I said, yeah, they showed up at nine o'clock this morning and went nuts so we'll, we'll keep that running but once the renovations are done i can roll out these menus the biggest kitchen issues will be mac um, i don't know if you've seen that kitchen it is a you can't get two people back there they decided to put this island in the middle of a kitchen that's not big enough for an island there's just no room to work so i've got to gut that whole thing the other ones are easy sim wasn't that hard tex logistically a box for a kitchen is not a good idea and that's what they have but i do have drawings and i'll make it work questions comments concerns anything on the and alcoholic beverages or anything oh well, what when was that ever brought up uh it's still there it's to get the liquor license is going to jesse and i have to beat down some walls but if we can get one thing in place, we can get another, and then Auburn would be the first rollout. But I can't see us not doing it everywhere because those are so popular right now. And I don't know if you've had these canned cocktails. They're really good. They really are. They're as good as anything you get at a bar and more consistent because it'll taste the same every time. But they are very good, and the, the profit margin on those is much better because I can charge seven fifty for a cocktail. A lot of those doubles, which could get a little scary. <laughs> um, Jesse's familiar with the transfusions, is that what they're called? And you can drink too many of those too easily, and there's a lot of alcohol in them. <laughs> and from what I understand, they're delicious. Too good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> too good to drink, but if you have six or seven of them, you're going to know it, and everyone around you is going to know it. No, you're talking about that, Jesse. That, Jesse. That. <laughs> not rum. <laughs> Specify for the minutes that I meant Kaufman. Not <laughs> Anything else I can answer for you? I'm trying. We're working our butts off. It'll get there. Be patient, and you'll. At worst, by next spring, we'll have all new menus and everything in place and, and much better food available. A big thing when Jesse and I first came in day one is we did a tour. And the first thing we said in three of the four golf courses is I would not hang out here. It is not a comfortable environment. They're ugly. They're run down. There's no reason for me to sit here and have a drink, eat some food. So... That was step one. So the renovations are finally moving after beating our heads in the wall for nine months. Things are happening and it's great to see them happen. And people are noticing. I get comments every single day I'm in a course. This is great. Courses look better. You're making improvements. It's, uh, Jesse, we didn't think about that tournament. Monday is going to be in the middle of turmoil at McDonald's. <laughs> I've already thought about it. I've already talked to Colin. We're going to get a plan tomorrow. Okay. I'll be there. Anything else I can answer? Help you with? Cook you dinner? I'll say yesterday when I walked in back, I've never seen him with so much adrenaline. Stuff was going I was He's talking 100 mile an hour. <laughs> Look what I did, Dad. <laughs> it's, it's just nice to see it. And Tex has been a slow process. The contractors having the subs are like one day, one guy will show up to paint. I'm like, really? Really, we're doing the inside and outside of this building and that ceiling's 25 feet high and you got one guy here? Come on. So he's been beating up on them and trying real hard and, and our contractor's great. Superintendent there is great. But 
They actually are replacing the ceiling tile, right? No, not not right now. If we do, we'll do that on our own. The issue with those, because I've gone up there, over the years they decided to paint those and they painted right across the grid and everything. And we had a HVAC guy there two weeks ago. He goes, I can't get it out. It's painted in there. And I said, I take a knife and you got to cut it around. It's horrible because people think, oh, it's dirty. I'll just paint over it. And that is the worst thing you can do for ceiling tiles. They're four bucks each, buy a new. I've been there. It added about 12 lights to that place because it lit up like a Christmas. Not a single, they haven't even finished the dining area lights. They were doing, they're doing that probably this week or next week. But yeah, it looks so much brighter. And just the, the color of the walls helps too. But the fact that those LED lights really, it pops now when you walk in. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, let's not entertain a motion to this. Sure. Make a motion to say to aye. 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 <laughs> Captain, make a motion toward the door. Three yeah. <laughs> <laughs> minutes early, I'll dock all your pages. Uh, Move it. Ready to go. We finished early. That's first. Artwork is not. Yeah. <laughs> they never finished. Yes. Yeah, Kicked out. Two things. We're not going to get to any yeah. report. Yeah. One, one, he was an asking for him. I think we did too.